Hello Linux lovers, my name's Wimpy, welcome to my world, welcome back, hello, oh it's Yannick, Yannick is first in with the first hello of the day, hello Yannick, how are you doing, welcome back, uh, the music is quite clippy, um, there's interesting, okay, I can do something about that, it shouldn't be now, it should duck uh, as I come in, but uh, I'll look at that in the, uh, it was, it was clipping in the intro. Okay, I'll take a look at that after. Okay. Yeah. Too many bits to switch. Okay, I was just, I, also the drop game has stopped working. That was working fine for two streams and the last two hasn't worked at all. Don't know what's going on there. Refresh the browser sources. No go. Anyway, despite all of that. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is uh, system D containers. So I've been using system D containers for some years now, quite a long time, to build things like Raspberry Pi images of, you know, uh, mostly Ubuntu distributions. Um, so I use them for the Ubuntu Mate Raspberry Pi images. I use it for Retro Home. It's proven to be a very reliable build tool and then for the OBS Studio portable builds, I employed the same mechanism to create clean build environments to compile and build OBS from source. And then Danny, who's here this morning, hello Danny, welcome back, uh, adapted those um, scripts so that they ran in um, GitHub workflows for you know release actions and what have you. And that's all ticking along quite nicely. So as I'm using this in several projects now, I'm wondering if this has got legs as a more generic sort of dev tool. Um, uh, so I'm gonna sort of take what I've got and see if we can prototype it in sort of a general purpose tool. And then we'll see, um, see if it's got legs. Also, if anyone, while they're watching this, thinks that I'm very squarely reinventing the wheel, squarely reinventing the wheel, um, let me know, um, because I think I wanna stay the course with this because this is sort of a workflow that I use. Um, but I do wonder if it's going to run out of rope when we get into sort of trying to configure things. Because what I want to do is integrate it with System D's uh, machine uh, control. Uh, square wheels indeed. <laughs> hey, hey, Henrik, welcome back. How are you? It's been a while. Um, so, um, right. So that's what I'm going to have a little look at today. Um, and I see Yannick's here. So, um, uh, we had a, a new bill of um, OBS Studio Portable the other day. And Yannick has created a new tool for it. So I thought we'd just go and take a little look at that. And for those of you that are watching uh, on YouTube, uh, I stream several times a week on twitch.tv slash Wimpy's World. So if you want to join in live with everybody else, um, come and head over to twitch.tv slash Wimpy's World uh, to join in interactively. So here's OBS Studio Portable. Um, we've got a new build out. Uh, there's a couple of plugin updates. Um, so that's all good and that was all released using Danny's release tooling. I've got one minor issue I'm still looking to fix with that but um, in air quotes it's all working fine. So uh, if we look in the readme we'll notice that there's um, a new section. If you want to install here are the command line instructions and now we have the fabulous quick OBS. So let's take a little look at that here. So Yannick has once again created a front end to one of my projects, an ecosystem of projects is emerging here. Um, so what does that look like? I think I have it all installed here. Here it is, let me just launch it. So let me drag this down onto the right screen. So this is what it looks like. So you can choose uh, where you want to deposit your freshly installed version. You can then, uh, it will automatically grab the updated release from the GitHub registry. And then from here, you can choose to save your configuration. So you'll know it's very easy to move configurations between versions. You can open it in the, in the file manager, run it and somewhere here, I seem to remember being able to choose whether I wanted 
OBS 28. Where do I do that? Where do I do that, Yannick? I'm missing it. I thought I was able to click in here yesterday and choose different versions of click the install button. Ah, here we go. So uh, you can then choose whether you want OBS 26, 27, 28. Uh, and there we go, and it's automatically selected the correct version uh, based on the version of Ubuntu that I'm running as well. Is the stream down? I don't believe so, Diogo. I'm looking at everything here and everything says the stream is up. Um, so, uh, yeah, I thought so. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have got some like things set up to tell me if the stream has failed, so it's all looking fine. Um, if if um, transcoding is enabled, maybe drop it down to like 720p. Maybe the bit rate's a bit high for the internet connection that you're on. Anyway, here we go. Quick OBS, graphical way to update, upgrade, install uh, the OBS Studio portable builds. So thank you, Yannick, for working on that. That's pretty cool. Right. Um, so let's go and uh, let's go and do this I haven't actually started this project I am going to do some cut and paste um, so I need a name for this uh, what I want to do is integrate it with machine control so if we just take a little look at that this is a tool that can uh, manipulate system D containers um, and what I'm not looking to do here is to create uh, another LexD. I don't want to make anything as sophisticated as that because I simply don't need anything as sophisticated as that. But I do want to expose some features that um, the systemd containers support. For example, there's a very interesting capability where you can boot containers so you can actually take them through the full init process um, so they're really like lightweight virtual machines at that point and I think that would be useful and so my 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 use cases are this building software in clean environments um, so I can accelerate my local development workflow and also testing builds of graphical applications from within inside those containers so without having to install anything on my actual machine and without having to use a virtual machine I can run the graphical applications and test that they're all working. I think that might be useful for people like Yannick who have now got a cornucopia of graphical applications that they're working on. It'd certainly be useful for me uh, testing new uh, versions of Ubuntu Mate apps and stuff like that and maybe even with that um, boot capability of the container testing the whole desktop environment um, in a much more rapid way than standing up a whole new virtual machine. So those are sort of some of the ideas I want to explore um, and I'll have to make a decision at some point as to whether it's worth the effort building that tool out or if using virtual machines is just the, the better way to go. So that's what I'm gonna, gonna have a little look at. Right, I see some of you are discussing, stream keeps pausing here, okay, um, I, I can't see anything wrong here in this room with my connection and talking to Twitch, so if there's any issues I'm guessing that may well be regional um, for wherever you are. Um, or, I mean, the bitrate's fine. Um, I mean, you could try changing the, uh, if it's transcoding, change the stream down to 720p, maybe your local point of Twitch connectivity is struggling. I shall see. Okay, Danny, thank you, thank you. And also Proton Bean, thanks for the feedback. Right then, uh, let's go and have a look at this then. Let's so sort of start to cobble the very beginnings of this together. Um, and I want to sort of try and um, include some features that are absent that I would like to use. Also, the other thing I'd like to do is turn this into a general purpose tool. 
maybe using something like Deb, Deb get to install it so that um, it can be easily stood up inside of GitHub workflows. So this tool would be available as a, you know, a means to create containers and do things inside containers. At least that's an idea. So um, Yannix, <laughs> Yannick's suggesting quick machine. Yeah, so that's, so Yannick's, this is kind of where I'm going with this. Um, quick machine version 2004. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the idea that I'm going with here. I was thinking maybe something like, let's just open up a text editor. Uh, file, new text file, get rid of you. I was thinking maybe something like, let's go with quick machine as the idea. So if we use the sort of quick get sort of idea, we would have something like this, quick machine, Ubuntu 20.04 or Ubuntu 22.04, sort of, you know, stand it up. Uh, so yeah, Diogo suggests quick containers and I thought of machine spawn because the other way to interact with this will be the system D utility machine couple. And what this is really going to be doing, well, yeah, it does more than this. So one of the functions of this thing is going to be to use Deb Bootstrap um, to stand up Ubuntu and Debian operating systems inside the container and maybe you know i don't know what the equivalent tools are but is there an equivalent tool for fedora what would that be can we you know stand up fedora containers i know there is an arch strap i haven't looked at it recently but maybe that could be integrated so i don't want to build out quite the sort of distro support that we have in quick mu I certainly only care about Debian and Ubuntu, but maybe adding in, you know, Arch and Fedora, that's probably got enough of our bases covered that that's, you know, generally useful to people. You like Machine Spawn. So Machine Spawn is definitely like a good way to describe what it, because the actual command that we're using behind the scenes is systemd nspawn, which is where the spawn comes from. So, and I kind of like machine spawn. It sounds kind, kind of cool, I think. <laughs> so that's, those are some ideas for the names. Um, but it's gonna have, to, I think it's gonna have to do more because at the moment what I do is I pass a bunch of arguments to systemd nspawn in order to tell it to uh, configure the container in a particular way, or at least how to execute the container in a particular way and what i don't know is if that is something i can like embed in a system d unit so when we create a machine we can persist some of those properties about how that container should be run executed uh, rather than injecting a bunch of options every time we run it so that's, I think, going to be the sticking point as to whether I think this has really got um, a good idea. So, <laughs> so you 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 want to write a quick machine? <laughs> okay. I wonder does machine does machine because the thing about um, machine control is it can manipulate containers and virtual machines um, because that's what System D can do. So, I'll. Uh, Names are hard. <laughs> let's let's try let's try and make the thing. Let's let's sort of start this up. So I'm not gonna check this into Git just yet. We're just gonna prototype the idea. So what should we call this thing? Let's call it Machine Spawn for now, um, and we'll see how we go. Um, and I've got in uh, OBS portable I've got a couple of scripts and I think it's the build enter or build boot build bootstrap uh, is one of them certainly 
So this is the one that uses um, their bootstrap. Now, this is also heavily derived from like my Raspberry Pi um, build scripts, although trimmed down. And I've also got this logic in here to detect if um, apt-cacher ng is running on the host and will automatically pass through uh, the configuration to use the apt cache inside the machine because obviously when I'm developing locally I'm iterating on things I'm installing packages as I go um, and I might destroy a container and recreate it and I want that container recreation to be as quick as possible so we use um, a local apt proxy in order to accelerate things so this actually doesn't do much with system DN spawn itself we do create a machine ID and we tinker with the hosts file these are all things so this is fine that's the um, that's the configuration for the archive obviously trimmed down to the minimum okay uh, so that is the so that's basically the spawning bit. Hello, good morning, Paul. <laughs> good to see you. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I, 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 well, yes, Popey, I agree. Um, that's just because this is, you know, for me, I'm sure we can figure that out. We could just drop the geo tagging because I think um, some of that stuff is... Um, has got geo proxying in the infrastructure at Canonical. So I think the, the one that is sort of the thing that manipulates the container itself is this enter piece. And again, we've got detecting the apt cache and configuring apt inside the container each time we enter the container. So this is why I think I'm going to need some kind of wrapper to always do this. And then here we have the system DN spawn where we override the resolve.conf behavior. Uh, we're changing to slash root because in this case, this build script runs in the root context and that was just a quick hack to get me in the right place. Uh, the directory is the root directory for the container that we've created with Dev Bootstrap. Um, then the host name, fair enough. And then the machine name. I can't remember why I specified both of those. And then here we're saying resolve.conf equals off because what we're doing is instructing the container not to use the host for uh, DNS resolution but to use its own uh, configuration file that we are hard coding. So these are things that we can debate whether or not we need to do that. And then at the end, so then we then we run a command. So that command by default, I think is bin bash. There we go. Or we can supply a command. So we can step inside to that container and either shell into it. Or if we know there is a script inside the container that we want to run we can execute that script which is how these um, build processes run um, you will have seen here after the container has been created I copy a whole bunch of stuff from the builder directory into the root directory of the container and that's all of the scripts in this case that build OBS studio and all of the artifacts I need to configure those builds so once I've created the container, this enter command is actually what's used to say, execute this command. So, but I think this could be simplified or we can pass some of this stuff in as, as arguments. Um, but what I don't know is if we can configure this in like a system D unit, because what would be nice is if we don't have to have any of this, have a, have a wrapper, I mean, except for the apt cacher stuff which I'll have to have a think about <laughs> so <laughs> oh cutainer 
Yeah, that's... I think if we're going to have Q at the front... Oh, what was it? Uh, Popey suggested one the other day. It was... Wasn't it something like... Um, con container. Was that what you suggested? Not with a K. No, we're not We're not writing a KDE application. <laughs> I'm, I'm not... <laughs> yeah, okay, so... Qu but Quan... Yeah, so Quantainer. The, these are all getting a bit esoteric now. I still like Machine Spawn. It's, it's a slightly incorrect description, but I kind of like it. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's let's take some of these and start to factor it together. So, if we take the bootstrap piece, we could probably just copy all of that for the moment. Uh, let's call this. Well, let's call the whole thing machine spawn, and we'll actually. Um, we'll. Uh, oops, save that. Let's do that. There we go. Okay, so. <laughs> I know Yannick probably wants to call it Blontainer or <laughs> something. Cause I'm going to have a flutter UI for it. Right, so that's just a very quick. Um... So I think. We'll just so this is this is some stuff that Danny added to make this compatible with the um, GitHub workflows. So I think we'll just leave that alone for the moment. Um, and then this is very specifically um, the build config. Yeah, so we, we're going to get rid of all of this because this is all very specific to uh, and we've got this command. So actually we'll drop this for the moment as well and we'll so, so this is all stuff that Danny's added to better support the GitHub workflows which I think I'm going to drop for the moment because we should be able to manage this through the GitHub workflows in a different way. So, whoop. That's, um, and then this is where we're creating the thing. So a lot of this is actually, R is the, is the shorthand for the root of where the thing exists. So I think what we'll do is we'll call this, we'll give this as a function name, and we'll say container bootstrap is what we'll call this. And we'll just drag all of that in there as the standard container up. We won't need that. So then we'll... Uh, why is what have we got here? Why have we got if? Okay, if okay, all of that can go in. There we go. Right. So if um, that directory doesn't exist, so that's a little check to make sure it doesn't trash an existing uh, container. We'll drop the prefix on that for the time being and here. So we're enabling all of the archives. We're excluding the Ubuntu Advantage tools to prevent some stuff running in the container we don't want. And then we're putting inside the container system D container. And this is, you'll see that this is a, a build requirement here. Uh, my understanding is if you inject this inside the container, it gives uh, the facility for 
systemd on the host to manipulate the the container more uh more to completely morning king egypt welcome to the stream how you doing so we'll just leave this for the moment um we'll drop all of this prefixing on these for now and else uh so we get rid of that because that's an irrelevant bit of information so that's a function that should stand the thing up um and what we could do is we could make our um a parameter that we pass in like so so we'll get rid of that I'm going to get rid of this builds directory thing. Target. Actually, this, for the purposes of this, this is... This we don't need. Okay, so what we can do here is we can call this machine directory. And actually what we're going to do is we could even make that read only. Um, because I think this is going to be... Um, our lib machines yeah that's what we'll do for now because any containers that get created in this directory um, will um, be manageable by machine control so we'll, we'll oops, what did I do? Okay. so hello 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 Takoff how are you doing good morning Hey Nuno, welcome back. How are you? Hmm. Yeah, this is me experimenting. See if we can turn this thing into a a useful tool. Um, I obviously could be doing this with Docker, right? Um, or at least for the non-architecture specific stuff, I could be doing it with Docker. <laughs> Hello, is me. Um. But I, I know that I want to be able to create foreign architecture containers. And quite frankly, I don't know how to do that with Docker. And I'm not going to learn that today because I want to explore what's possible with systemd containers. Um, <laughs> that one. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does work, Tackle, if you've spelt it wrong. Um, you can just do sup to get that uh, what's going on thing and um, command says me I'm aware that I need to actually uh, write that one up there we go Yannick's got it <laughs> I've also I've also added one um, so uh, uh, what was it Danny had the idea of doing an Ubuntu Mate one or a Chelsea Cucumber one so we've got bang CC there we go <laughs> So there's all the information. I think that was the... And it, it responds to some aliases as well. Right, so that's container bootstrap. I think we'll create another function uh, based on this here. So we'll take that. And... We'll put that. Let's create a function called container run. I'm not sure if that's the right term. But we'll We'll do this. We'll pass. Yeah, actually that could be that. Because we could do the same thing, couldn't we, where we we can operate on a particular container here um, and we'll have local see in fact we'll just do that like so and then we don't need the condition closed there okay so that's probably fine for just getting some basic stuff we're not going to do that we're not going to do this so act cache 
Um, I'll just stick this inside the function for the moment. Um, So, this should be the logic to run a container. Um, that can be a local. That's poking at the apt config. Let's just have all of that in. And then clean up after ourselves. Okay, so that should run a container. Ugh. <laughs> what? How on earth are you supposed to pronounce that? Just container in Welsh. No, I don't even know how to pronounce it. And it immediately minimizes the uh, usefulness of the search queries for this command to those three million people in Wales. <laughs> of those three million people in Wales, those that run run Ubuntu. <laughs> I think we might constrain the, aud the potential audience there a little bit. Um, so, machine dir. So we're going to need some stuff here to get some arguments. Uh, what could we borrow from? Let's go and grab. Um... <laughs> uh, because Yannick's voting for it, uh, is vetoed. <laughs> um... <laughs> Hey, hey, Mandy, how you doing? Uh, right then, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm not naming anything after myself. Uh, I'm just thinking, we'll take a look at Quick MU, I think, uh, because that's got a fairly comprehensive list of argument passers. Yeah, so we'll just head to the bottom of here and we'll just grab what I've done before with argument passing. Here it is, somewhere here. Here it is. So we'll, um, that'll do. So we'll just yank all of that and we'll whittle down the, uh, options to um, well, so we'll need a usage function so we'll just do that very quickly as a empty empty thing um, so let's think what kind of options are we going to need we're going to need um, the machine, hmm, should we call it a machine? Let's do name for the moment. Um, and that will result it. We want to do that based on this kind of thing here. Shift, shift, yeah. Let's do name equals, um, that and then we'll shift this twice um, and then we want some options like for example um, bootstrap and uh, that can call container bootstrap that's, um, did you see that? That was, uh, what do you call it? Copilot figuring that out. So that's doing the right thing. Um, so we probably need to initialize some variables here. So name. Is gonna be that. And we can just do something which is 
Okay. If the name has a value. Maybe I'll move this logic after, but I'm just going to go with the Git Copilot suggestions for the moment, just to flesh this out as quickly as possible. So I see there's some chat. Let me catch up here. Uh, uh, so confirmed internet is working. Okay, system C. Oh, no. Why do you keep capitalizing the system and the C and the D? <laughs> Container system, right. Um, or soccer. Hmm. I'm not going to tell you the name that I once heard slip out of someone's mouth at a conference. Um. Oh gosh, here we go. <laughs> it does look pretty. Feel free to to submit translation strings. Um. So let's just, I think we'll, we'll do something like, uh, so that bootstrap thing, if we're bootstrapping, we probably need to ensure we have some other details or we'll just, because what does that bootstrap at the moment? Yeah, so making an assumption about distro. Um, so let's just do this local distro equals. Is that it's not Ubuntu, is it? It's the release. So that distro. Oh, uh, okay. So this is name, really, isn't it? This this should be name. Name is going to be probably in the global scope though, so we'll keep that. Distro, this isn't release, this is going to be something like distro release. And we'll just put jammy in there for the moment. Because obviously this is hard coded to Ubuntu for the time being, so let's do distro release so that makes a bit more sense name makes sense um, distro let's just dob that in here okay you tend to capitalize things <laughs> Right, um, so container to run a container. So what are we going to need? We're going to need to actually put all of this logic. We're going to we're going to put all of this logic beneath. So what we want to do here is we want to set something like um, bootstrap equals one and this logic will go down here oh we need to go and get rid of some stuff so hmm actually we could do something a bit like a, a finite state machine couldn't we for what we're, we're only going to ask a container to do one thing at a time. So let's just get rid of all of these. Don't think we need any other examples. Honestly, you LXC the successor. It's no, it's not going to be a LexD alike because LexD is extremely comprehensive all of that stuff so let's have a thing called action 
and if the action is action equals um, let's think about it bootstrap yes that seems reasonable so we'll add another action which is um, run um, oh, I've missed my those run so now we can do here we can do um, case on the action so we can have bootstrap there we go and run there we go get up coat by that's awesome isn't it so we had some logic here so let's just replace that what have we got here so in order to bootstrap a container we need a name we don't need a distribution and we don't need a distribution code name for the time being but we do need the name of the name of the machine and we do need the name of the machine so actually if if name is empty then we'll thank you for the follow lumicode <laughs> lumicode i think that is <laughs> thank you thanks uh for the uh follow and welcome to the stream so <laughs> glitter indeed yeah hello hello and welcome yeah uh, in fact, uh, that's just triggered a new feature of my chatbot, which is um, to, you know, welcome you in chat as well as, you know, run the animations. So, yeah. <laughs> right then. So if um, we want to catch this uh, condition where if we haven't got a name, we probably want to bomb out, um, which is error must specify a name for the container. I think that will do. That's... That's co-pilot suggestions. We're just going with as much co-pilot stuff as we can at the moment. So that means we don't need this now, this wrapper around each of these functions. <laughs> Name the machine Bob. Um, I'm not naming the machine Bob. There are, there are personal reasons why I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, so that means that we must specify a name and then we can bootstrap it or run it and the container run probably needs a safeguard which is does this thing exist which i don't see in there at the moment so we'll just borrow that from here um, we'll just do the inverse of this uh, and we'll do If uh, that if the directory doesn't exist, then we'll error out. Yeah, uh, we we'll just do error um, container R oh, does not exist. There we go. That should catch some of the very obvious. Uh, what have I got? I've got a. Oh yes, well spotted. Thank you. I've probably done that up here as well, have I? No, nope, I got it right there. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Did uh, <laughs> Copilot even <laughs> brought in the misspelling as well? Okay, so what have we got here? Um, we've got bootstrap the container and run the container. And we've got CMD, which could be an optional. So we can say here um, maybe maybe we'll do that here 
Um, let's think. Hmm. Or maybe the command could simply be what's left at the end. For now, we'll just shell into the thing. Right then, uh, is that going to do anything? Is that going to do anything useful? Dare, dare we try it? So we must be root, okay. We've said where we want to create things and we're root, so that's a reasonable place to do this. For the container bootstrap, we pass it the directory that we're operating on, along with the name, so that's fine. This should work. Uh, repo, so repo needs to be a local variable. Um, got the directory name is definitely being passed in in the global scope okay distro release we've hard coded that in the function which we don't need to know about anywhere else and then for the time being the command is hard coded to bin bash unless we pass in a second parameter which we've not got any logic to handle at the moment why is that complaining at me? Declare and assign separately. Okay. So let's keep shell check happy. Um, oh, we've got this distro business again as well, haven't we? So Let's just simplify this down at the moment because I think we'll probably get rid of this at some point. I think what we'll do is we'll get Resolve running off the, um, and this is going to be name, and name. Which will be in the global scope. Yeah, okay. Right then. So, uh, yeah, so that's something I'm interested in looking at with this, Danny, is there are some different networking modes available. Um, and unlike QuickEMU, which I really wanted to always run in a regular user context, so consequently, um, it can't automate things like bridged networking. Uh, this always has to run as root. You can't bootstrap a... Um, a file system or a directory with that without using um, root and you can't um, use system dn spawn without being root so consequently doing fancy networking stuff with the container is a possibility as something we can you know integrate and automate right then let's um Action, action, case, action in container bootstrap name, container run name. Okay, let's give this a try then. What could possibly go wrong? Ugh. What do we reckon? Chances of success. Let's see your uh, predictions. Um, right then. Uh, what do we call this thing? Machine spawn. 110%. Danny, I feel that that is over overconfident. Um, so it's all executable. So let's do the, the obvious thing. Let's do that. Okay. You must be root. Okay. Uh, I'm deliberately trying to test the error condition. So that didn't tell me what was wrong, which was I didn't pass any parameters. So let's just go and see why I didn't get an error message there. That should, so name is set to nothing here. Um, so I should have got to this condition here, shouldn't I? 
you must specify the name for a container, but I didn't see it. Uh, why is that not doing what I expect? Okay, well that's... Okay. Well, what did... Yannick, let's let's call um, the container Winkle. So, see what happens. Oh no, actually, this isn't going to do anything, is it? The Winkle is not a supported parameter. There we go. Uh, so we need to actually... That's in a big loop. Okay. Because... <laughs> that needs to exit uh, because that's in a loop so it also needs shifting out doesn't it so we should do that just to be correct and usage actually usage ship let's do this and just have the usage function exit Thank you for the follow queer timer hello queer timer thanks very much welcome to the channel right let's just do that as like uh, the, uh, what's this base name command that will do for now it's not very elaborate but it will do so there we go winkle is not so now we should be able to well let's do run Error Winkle is not supported. Oh, because I haven't told it that's the name of the thing. Okay. <clears throat> and so I can't run it because it doesn't exist. This is the correct option. So let's bootstrap that container. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, it's not perfect, but it's it's doing it's doing the important bits at least. <clears throat> So, once this has booted the container, I should be able to shell into it using the run command. And I think what I'm going to do is we'll, we'll take the leftover arguments and pass those in as the run command. So, machines born run name. I wonder if we need the maybe the action could always be the first parameter because there is only ever going to be one action take the name as always going to be the second parameter so we don't need to use switches and then take anything else as the command that we pass into the container i think that might work better <laughs> yes it is indeed cool retro term well spotted uh, welcome to the stream uh, Anakim Luke, is that is that have I got that right? Welcome, welcome to the stream. So if we now try and run this container, there we go. We are indeed root inside this container, and we could do stuff. So I should be able to app get update. There we go. It's jammy, which is what we were expecting, and app get upgrade. Wow. That's curious. Why have I got a load of packages that need updating in a freshly spawned container? That's curious. Maybe we should do this as part of spawning the container? Bootstrapping the container? Yeah, that seems sensible. <clears throat> Did the video pause, but the audio carry on playing for anyone else. <clears throat> um, so, Anakim Luke. Um, Containers are containers, you know, this is just a a container. It's so I work a lot with Docker for my day job. Um, but I've been using systemd containers for some years now as like um for my local build tooling and what have you. And I've just noticed that I'm using it as a pattern in a lot of projects. 
So I thought I'd have a go at trying to see if I could turn it into a general purpose tool. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how we get on. Thank but... you for the follow, Renstachio. Hello, Renstachio. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to build out the basics of a tool to bootstrap a container and step inside it and be able to execute things. And that's because uh, a project that I started last week or the week before last, uh, Danny, who's here in uh, chat, uh, took the scripts that I created and got them all running in um, GitHub Workflow with minimal effort. So I was just thinking this is a nice way to have a tool that I can use locally that I can also drop into GitHub. Um, no, so uh, Anakim Luke has got some interesting questions here. So they're asking, uh, when I make a systemd service or a systemd unit, is that a container? No. Uh, a systemd unit is uh, some configuration to dictate how a service should start with what parameters and under what conditions should it start and stop or be restarted. So that isn't launching anything in a container, it's just telling um, the process manager to um, start a container. If we have a look here, um, if I exit my container, in fact if I go to my code, this is like we're literally creating this on the fly at the moment. Um, so we've got two functions, one is container run and this is the system D bit. The bootstrap piece uses dev bootstrap to basically uh, create a file system of a minimal Ubuntu operating system. So that's what this does. Then we're using this command here, which is part of systemd, systemd n spawn, which is the container management tool, to um, start that container. So this is very primitive at the moment. All it does is it says, in this directory is an operating system file system and um, execute this command inside that container which by default is just um, executing bash so we can step inside it. So if I exit the container I'm out of it and then we've got run name winkle. So I think we're going to simplify the UI because I don't think having all of these as options makes sense. I think what we should probably do is just have something like run winkle. I think that would be nicer and then on the end here we could probably have something like my CI script as like the the parameters to pass into the container to execute inside that container. So this is really using, trying trying to set up a simple way to use containers for build automation um, so that I can use it locally and also use it in CI jobs. So I think we'll go and refactor this just to simplify this out uh, and get rid of this. So we will have <clears throat> if let's think if that is first parameter, this is going to be the second parameter, isn't it? You must specify a name for the uh, for the container. Yep, um, and then we'll say name else <clears throat> there we go copilot's doing its thing again so we'll do that here and then we'll have the first one which is basically this um, if uh, you must specify an action There we go, we'll take that. Thank you, Copilot. <laughs> uh, action is that. And then we can do that, so that's fine. And we can get rid of all of this. 
unnecessary. Um, there we go, that'll do. Hello, welcome back, Takov. So, Anakim, did I answer your question or did that was that unclear? So, let's see, that's a much simpler um, base name command. Yes, okay, fine. So now we should be able to do this slightly differently. So actually probably want a, um, I think I called it trash in the other one. So let's add a new command. Container trash. Like I so in fact, these can all be Simplified a lot more. We don't need. I mean, we could even we could even do something groovy. I mean, I'm doing these discreetly at the moment, but we could have done something like this. We could have had bootstrap um, trash run, and then we could have container action uh, like so thank you for subscribing Lumico day oh Lumico that's very very kind of you thank you very much so we could have done something like that but uh, whilst that's possible oh, I've spelt it wrong um, it's um, it's highly likely these are going to need additional logic around them at some point in the future, so we'll we'll just get rid of that. So, container bootstrap, container trash. So let's go and create. In fact, let's bring up um, this script from the other project, and we'll just use this as a. There we go. There's our function. Uh, trash. Um, so if that directory exists, then do that and we'll take that out of there. We probably need to put some else. Go on co-pilot. There we go. It's close enough. There we go. Right. So I should now be able to uh, no, let's go to the right directory. So let's do this. So we'll now do machine spawn trash winkle. In fact, I'm gonna misspell it. Doesn't exist. There we go. So my container is removed. I'm now going to bootstrap a new container. This one's gonna be called Fred. There we go. That's that's cleaner, cleaner command line. I think we can only have one action, so it doesn't need to be options. Thanks for spotting the typo, <laughs> Renstachio. Yeah, I got there in the end. <laughs> I was I was kind of giving an example of how you can like use variables inside, uh, you know function names that you're going to call make the code a bit more dynamic but um, it's not um, it's not mega readable so we'll ignore that so there's some things that we could do when we're bootstrapping with there's some stuff that we probably want to pass in we, we it'd, be, it'd be good to set an architecture it would be good to set a variant who's this a wizard interference I'm working on improving that as well in fact, um, 
I've been tinkering with things. Let's just do this a second. If I go down here, is this the one? If I do the filters on that, yeah, here we go. So I've been having some fun in here, so I, I figured out how to do this, <laughs> for example. Um, and all sorts of uh, all sorts of unusual bits and pieces as well. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of colour separation that I can do in the background <laughs> and stuff. Uh, which I thought would be good for something like this one um, that's got the git cracking up. We could do um, uh, there's a water effect, water rippling effect. Anyway, so some silly ideas for how to integrate some camera effects when some of the animations play. <laughs> release the Kraken. I don't know. Um, I might release the Kraken later. I'm going to see if this gets to a point of being useful, and maybe I'll I'll stick it in Git. Um, we'll see how we go. So we've we've bootstrapped Fred, and now we can run Fred again. And there we go. So now we've got a container back. So let's just go and improve that bootstrapping process because that uh, we have all of this. So let's think about this. If it already exists, and then we could do container run r. Yeah, see, this is what I. This is what we need to do now. Is this is be able to um, reuse our own functions to do this sort of thing. So let's go and capture this. Hey Ploid, how you doing? Um, so um, Ploid asks, what is the advantage of this approach over something like Docker or Lexi, LexD for build autom automation? Um, only that I've been using this approach specifically for foreign architecture uh, build projects. So uh, building ARM uh, contain, well not even ARM containers, but ARM images on x86 workstations. That's how this started some years ago. And now I've started using the same pattern for building it, it, creating clean environments to build code basically and I'm just experimenting to see if this idea has got any significant benefits because I'm familiar with it and I, I like it and I know it to be very reliable uh, I'm just thinking could this be a general tool that I could create so that's what I'm that's what I'm experimenting with <laughs> Fred, Fred is fine, Yannick. Fred is an excellent name. Uh, Bob. There are reasons why I'm not go, going with Bob. So now what I want to do is I want to pick up my container run here. So the command is, this should be. Let's do this. Is this, does that work when it's, um, Let's just put an exit statement in here and do echo because I can't remember if I can use get all of the remaining parameters inside. Arrays don't work as operands. Okay. Uh, so how am I going to do this? If I suppose I could still do it that way. Let's let's see what we get. Oh, typo. Let's see what we get. So we'll do container run. Uh, let's go back over here. So run Fred. Uh, let's do true. Okay, that didn't do what I expected. <laughs> at all did I save it if oh I don't I don't pass it in do I okay so container run this should have that on it 
like so. Is that gonna? Okay, so that printed the whole thing. So, that is everything that the script was executed with. So it is going to be, um, yeah, so uh, Mandy, you're quite correct. It is indeed um, closer to a CH root than Docker Podman. Yeah, and that's how it started because the the, the original versions of those Raspberry Pi image build scripts that I created oh, seven years ago did use CH roots uh, and it was horribly unreliable. So um, at some point, I think 2016, 2017, I switched to this systemd container approach and it, it's been mega reliable. Um, but it's really create an environment, build some code, throw away the environment, or build an environment, test some code, throw away the environment. That's kind of the, the workflow I'm going for. And I could be using Docker to do some of this. I just want to try something different and see see if it's got any um, see if it's got any uh, any legs. I'd like to find a way to make a general purpose tool even if it's just for myself uh, for speeding up some of the stuff i do um it this is and yannick makes a very good point is that system d is already part of any well most linux distributions and so consequently although i'm making this to run here you know if you are running Fedora or Arch, it should be possible to run this tool on those and also stand up Arch and Fedora with this tool inside containers. That's sort of where I'm thinking of getting to. Um, and there are some additional overhead of using things like um, Docker and uh, LexD. They come with a lot more stuff uh, that you need to consider and I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible um, so Anakim Luke asks how sandbox the system containers uh, it's using all the same container primitives as uh, docker and container D and podman so just the same just the same as any other Linux container it's all namespaced and what have you um, I'm not doing anything additional to you know stick set comp or app armor profiles around it um, I'm not interested in that I don't need that level of sophistication um, is your tool a parallel effort to machine control no in fact it's not it's intended to be the precursor to machine control and this is what I'm gonna have to figure out what I want to do is have this be able to stand a container up um, and you'll notice that it's building the containers in bar lib machines because that's where machine control looks for uh, containers and virtual machines that it can, in air quotes, manage. So this is kind of like the bit before machine control, but what I'd want to do is, is make this thing integrate with machine control. I haven't figured that bit out yet, but that's, that's kind of the, the idea. You'd use this to create the container um, and maybe operate, you know, your your CI/CD execution on it, but you could also use machine control to uh, boot it or whatever. So, you know, maybe I'll I'll change that. I mean, let's just remind ourselves: machine control has got well, several facilities. Oops. You know, maybe I should be. So, you know, list, status, show, clone, rename, remove. Maybe here, for example, I shouldn't just be delete the name of a thing. In fact, let's do it now. Let's do this. Let's, uh, 
let's pass this on. Let's actually use machine control to delete the container. And we have got here, we've got start, login, show. So we could probably... Thank you for the follow, Otifex. Thanks very much for the follow. Welcome, welcome to the stream. So we could, you know, pass through a whole bunch of these things maybe uh, from Machine Spawn. So instead of this here, let's um, let's just try this out. Let's uh, let's just comment all of that out and. Uh, So we'll create a, uh, we've got a created machine. Let's make another one. Um, let's bootstrap a new machine and call this one, oh, go on then, Yannick. Let's call this one Bob. <clears throat> so we'll quickly <clears throat> stand up a machine there. Oh, this is gonna fail. <laughs> this is gonna fail. <clears throat> because uh, I've got those up, up, update upgrade things in there which we're not catching properly yet. So, <clears throat> so we'll just let this container stand up and then we'll immediately destroy it because we don't like Bob. <laughs> we'll immediately destroy it and see if just using uh, machine control works because if it does, maybe this is how we can use more of machine control throughout the rest of this because like i say i don't want i don't want to re-implement lexd or docker or systemd containers i just want a layer on top okay so that does the right thing so now if we do trash bob there we go it's gone let's do it again there we go this is good because now we can rely on machine controls uh stuff so well that that made that a whole lot easier. And we can also do this now. So we we'll use common, common language. We don't need to pass any parameters to it now either because we're just passing the name which we have a check for here <laughs> so um, that's not going to work so we'll pass uh, through two no not two three hmm one command would that be sufficient? Let's figure it out. So let's um, let's try that. So we're passing that in. So we just look at the run command. We could look at changing some of this. This needs wrappers at the moment for all of the proxy stuff that's in here. So. Um, Let's do that. Let's not exit there. And CMD equals that. Let's see. Uh, let's actually make this a bit more sensible. Like so. And We'll see what we get. So if we come back to our script here, we've still got Fred, I think, because we like Fred. Uh, let's do sudo machine spawn run um, Fred, and let's do at get minus y update. Uh, oh, I spelt Fred wrong. Close. So what did we actually pass through? Um, 
Okay, well, let's wrap that all in quotes then and see if this is going to work. Um, see, uh, okay. Yeah, this is not going to work great, is it? So, let's try that. I have to have a little think about how we do this. Yeah, okay, so we're going to have to pass those additional fields correctly. Well, we'll figure that one out. Um, let's have a look here. Um, Shell Get is a good name. Shell Get. What's this? <laughs> What's being discussed here? Um, Bash Get is the package manager for Bash libraries. Is that a thing? Is that like, is that something similar to Oh My Bash? Uh, are you making this up, Mandy, or is this an actual, an actual thing that exists that we could start using today? Right. Okay. Let's um, let's. I, I'll come back to this. I I'm gonna just not do that bit for the moment we'll we'll get to that um cmd bin bash because i wonder yeah i'll have a think about this Anyone got any bright ideas about how we can trivially just pass out uh, an additional command? Let me know. So, uh, hey Kiwi Jim, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> welcome to the stream. So Kiwi Jim says, because uh, I don't pay attention to these things much, but what's the difference between apt get and apt? Um, a massive oversimplification is there really shouldn't be any difference between apt and apt get. Um, apt doesn't have a passable um, text output, or at least it isn't a stable passable text output for using in scripts if you want to, you know, grep stuff out of it. Um, so if you're calling, you know, stuff in scripts for apt, then use apt get is the best advice. And um, the reason I use it is that I have noticed in some edge cases, the package dependencies are resolved slightly differently in some cases between apt and apt get. And I know the maintainer of both those projects and their advice was apt get is the most accurate of the two. So I use it for that reason primarily. Oh my gosh, we're making up new project names. What, what's going on now? <laughs> uh, see you, Ren Stachio. Thanks for stopping by. <clears throat> uh, you're welcome, uh, Kiwi Jim. Uh, shall I make Quick Shell a GUI for Wimpy's World? Sh shonky Shell scripts. Oh, it's my shell. My shell scripts are not shonky. These are wonderful, be beautiful shell scripts. <laughs> the finest the finest shell scripts that you can find um i mean look i've been i've been making sure shell script is happy all the way through mostly <laughs> i haven't whatsoever been letting github copilot just you know plonk code into uh <laughs> it's, it's, i think it's shonky and chunkier <laughs> thank you for the follow kiwi jim thank you kiwi jim welcome well, we're seriously close to uh, 1,300 here. If there's anyone watching that hasn't followed yet, can consider giving us a follow. That would be that would be lovely. Um, right. Let's have a look at machine control to see what else we could quickly uh, rattle up. Um, so we could do list status that seems like a good one doesn't it show so let's try some of these
Ah, oh, there are none. Really? I feel like that's a lie. I thought I had one called Fred. Have I killed it? I wonder what is not correct here then no I, there is a container called Fred it's just for reasons I don't know can I do login Fred so maybe something to do with the way I'm creating the machines is not is there a Hmm. So, I wonder if the machine control is maybe what I should be using. So we've got show, start, login, shell, enable, disable, Find. Huh. I wonder if these properties get attached to the container, because if they do. So, this is where I'm trying to think about how. What I'd, I'd like to lose the wrapper, although the wrapper's handy for the proxying stuff. So, why did that work? Remove, but. Remove a hidden VM or container. Hmm. Image transfer. Okay. So I wonder if there's like a registry of OS images out there somewhere we can uh, go and uh, take advantage of. That would be rather handy. If not, we could make our own, I suppose. <laughs> there must be one, I'd have thought. So property, okay, so we can set some of these properties. This would be quite handy. So I think we should wrap as much functionality of machine control. I haven't tried to register the machine in any way, Danny. I have just said to Deb Bootstrap, go and create a, create a file system here. Um, which is why I'm looking through this to see if there's like a correct way to instantiate. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't have thought so. System D and spawn directory or image. Yeah, okay. Hey there. Bus Bauer, is that right? Uh, <laughs> we've had that question a couple of times today, <laughs> the Bus Bauer. Um, so I've been using systemd containers to build uh, Raspberry Pi images for some years now. And I've started using uh, the same technique to build other projects. And Danny, who's here in the stream, adapted that to GitHub workflows. And I'm just experimenting. I'm, I, I, I use Docker a lot for work and what have you, and I kind of like this workflow. So um, I'm trying it out to see if there's mileage for making this like a, a general purpose tool. Um, so just an opportunity to learn and try some stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm quite a fan of systemd containers. It's worked really well for me. Uh, here we go. So, there's an example here of how to stand up a Fedora image and also how to stand up uh, Ubuntu images using that um, pull mechanism. So maybe we can we can change this a little bit by using machine control to um, start the image. Or rather 
provision the the container. I feel yeah okay. Create a new shell okay. This that was quite helpful. This bit here, so we could go and find some of these right. Um, so maybe we should maybe we should move to this mechanism. Let's go and have a little look here because this I am familiar with. Oops, what did I just do? Let's go here. Oh, no, I missed it. I think it's cloudimages.ubuntu.com, isn't it? Yeah. So let's let's move to this mechanism. So we've got all of the uh, LTS images there. Let's look at Jammy current. What do we have here? That looks like a generic image. How big is that? 389 megabytes. That's rather big. That's bigger than that's bigger than the uh, bootstrapped containers that I'm creating. Hmm. Hmm. I want something smaller. I mean. What would be, what is handy is, I can. I d yeah, I wouldn't have to. Yeah, that's actually this is actually quite cool, because I wouldn't have to specify the architecture for the dev bootstrap piece. All right, okay. Well, let's give this a try. Let's find something appropriate. Let's just go with. this is an example so let's try let's try and adapt this so instead of doing um, the, the bootstrap piece well we won't hmm so we wouldn't need any of this I don't think because we're not going to be doing that so let's um, Let's yank this and get the example from the man page here, which was pull tar, and then I'm guessing that is just a... Yep, okay. And I'm guessing dash M is actually shorthand for name, is it? Oh, machine. Hmm. Isn't well, let's find out. So it takes that end piece as the actual name by the looks of it. Okay, and then uses the thing to open shell. Fine, okay. So no verification. I'm just looking at these examples here. So setting a password, start and login. Okay. The downloads. What's a raw? A raw image. Is that the VM? Because we don't want to get into doing VMs. We've got another tool for that. Um, okay. Let's just pull tar and see what we get. So grab that cloud image and hmm okay so we probably don't need any of this stuff anymore uh, or this 
wonder if we want to provision that, but we'll just turn it all off to see what we get. Let's go and see what we actually um, what we actually get when we do this. We do need that. Well, okay, so distro release jammy, so we'll just drop that in to, um, so that it can be configured at some point. So, this has got me thinking. <laughs> it would certainly, it looks like it's certainly be possible to build out better distro support using this technique. Uh, we've got architecture here which we could tinker with because we know we can run foreign architecture stuff and that isn't something we need to tell the container about providing we've got QMU user static installed so we probably need to make sure that's installed at some point. It will be on my machine. Okay, let's try and do this. Let's do um, machine spawn, bootstrap. Um, we'll call this one Barney. Uh, and I need to be root, of course I do. Okay. So it says here, getting it and saving it as, oh, so it's going to ignore my naming. Okay, that's fair enough, I suppose. So that's, oh, but we can rename them, can't we? We can rename them. So I could do that as a step afterwards. So downloading invalid, signature failed. Oh, well, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Um. Let's do machine control list. Doesn't recognize it. Let's just make sure it's a, it's not a permissions thing. Hmm. Well, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? That it. <laughs> okay, well, let's try this for fun. So this was one of the reasons why I'm doing this is, so I do need to give it a name. Because my scripts currently expect there to be a name, even though this is going to call it its own thing. But we could add a step, which is to use machine control to rename the thing to the name we want to give it, which would be reasonable. So, hey Ross Madness, it's been a while. Welcome back. Um, is Cloud Images the same repo that LexD uses? I think so. I think so. I'm not 100% certain, but I'm fairly certain it is, yes. Um, it's certainly what are used by some of the like canonical projects, but for things like the launch pad builders, they use a slightly different version, I think. Hmm. Okay, well this is this is a bit irritating that the, uh, oh actually, wasn't there an option to do like no verify or something? Let's do that. Let's do that so we can get the thing to go. It wasn't that, it was in the man page, wasn't it? <clears throat> Um, oh well this this is interesting isn't it so so it was in the fedora example verify no so there we go let's add that just to get the thing going
and we'll put this back to Jammy just to say it's current. And then um, we could do this, couldn't we? We could do machine control um, rename. So I think it's going to be called something like that and we can then put in just need to run it again to see what it actually said it was going to call the machine so let's give that another go uh, let's bootstrap test 2 so what does it say it's going to call it it's going to save it as so everything except for the extension basically okay so that was correct Let's see if this <clears throat> works. So Kiwi Jim, ah, the classic hacky shortcut, ignore the search. Well, it, for whatever reason, oh dear, it's even worse. Operation not permitted. Oh, because I didn't save the thing. Hang on, I did. What's that? I think that's a different error now. Failed to rename the final image to Operation Not Permitted. Uh, well, I'm not having much luck with this, um, this tooling that's built into machine control. Let's try again. Now, I've definitely got my stuff disabled. Oh, hello. Request root dot n spawn. What's this? <laughs> Get it running first and then sort it out. Yeah, I mean, the the whole point of this stream is to test some stuff and try some things and see what's working. It turns out not very, <laughs> not very much in ma machine control is actually working. So me using dev bootstrap was way more successful than this um this is disappointing okay and i'm doing this because i want to try and see what the correct process is for creating a machine that is registered with machine control because currently my machines are not i can run Bread, which is my container that I created using the bootstrapping process and that works so I'm gonna have to consider the uh, the value of trying to use these other tools but the fact that that doesn't work at all fail to rename the final image I mean, it's running in the root context. I mean, unless, of course, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try machine control, pull, tar, and go and grab an image from here. Oh, here's, well, that's just a sim link by the looks of it, isn't it? Copy that. So I'll sidestep all of my stuff. Let's see what happens if we do that. So it's asked me to authenticate. Uh, it looks like it's going to do exactly the same thing. So I fully expect this is not going to work. Or is it going to make a liar of me? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Did that? No. So that. Huh. So that's where I was with the uh, the thing not working. So let's try this. Let's try. Verify equals no. 
maybe I have the parameters in the wrong place. So it's definitely looking for an end spawn file, which it wants to use in preference to the tarball. I wonder if it that's a hint how some of the other distros are packaging their file systems. Come on. Yeah. So machine control doesn't work as advertised. Well that's slightly disappointing because I would have liked to have done that. So hmm. Well, okay. I'm going to unpick this and restore what I currently what I had, which now I've learned that machine control technically has a way to do this in itself. I want to use, but given it doesn't work, I will uh, stick to my stuff. Right, okay, so I think that's given me some things to think about. So, Nuno, uh, just for a test, I could double you get it. <clears throat> I could do that because there is an import command isn't there I feel like I'm working around the system by doing that but okay let's have a little look let's do um, uh, we'll W get that in fact we don't even need to W get it to anywhere special Will is it import? I think I saw that machine control had a, an import thing. So let's um yeah. It seems to me that somehow machine control was pulling the image down quicker as well. So, oh. I mean, I could mimic all of that functionality. I could use wget or curl to download these images, check the Uh, bother. <laughs> okay. Um, is it minus C to tell it where to go? Let's just try that. I think that's how you do it. I can't remember. No, it's not that. Does that directory need to exist? <laughs> yeah, I think Aria is maybe the protocol that's um, that that's using because it seemed to be coming down a bit quicker. Right. Uh, so if we look at test, that should be our file system, in it, and indeed it is. So let's now move test to var the machines. Well, we can just call it test, I suppose. And then um, machine control. I'm pretty sure there was a, an import. Well, here we go. Import. Oh. Import directory. Import a local directory container image. Oh, maybe that's how I could do it. Maybe if I use dev bootstrap, I can do import like so. 
So does that mean I could, uh, so I could potentially pre-cache the bootstraps. So bootstrap them somewhere. Well, let's, let's try both of these. So I think it might not like it because I'm gonna try and import something that exists in the machines directory. But let's find out. And if this fails, then that's fine. Come on. Uh, I've done that typo more than once today. I obviously need to alias that. Yeah, test already exists, but that's correct because the directory does exist. <clears throat> but machine control doesn't know about it. Okay, so let's try this then. Okay. Mm. Hey, hey, Eric, how you doing? Hello, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping back. Nice to see you. I think we'll try. We'll try something here. <clears throat> we'll try this. We'll bootstrap the image. Just sticking with what I have, because we have the benefit of this caching here. We'll bootstrap the image to, let's call this local, no, not here. So. Repo equals. We'll. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So we'll change this. Because then it should be possible to, what I'm thinking is we'll bootstrap all of the images to, let's call it bar cache bootstrap. So we'll set you to R like so. And if it doesn't exist, go through all of the motions. Go through all of the motions and just get rid of that for the moment. And then we'll do machine. Uh, import file system. Ah. Uh, as name. I think that's how that should work, judging by what we just read. So import fs directory name. Import a local directory container image. A local directory container image. Okay. So raw is VM images and tarballs are the file system related stuff. Okay. Let's try that. Thank you for the follow, Raphael Sam. Hi Raphael. Thank you very much for stopping by. Welcome, welcome to the stream. So is this gonna break anything? We're, we're using R, which I'm not happy with, but we'll just go with it for now. But we've got the bootstrap directory and we need to use this for the bootstrapping mechanism. So we'll just change this like so. Okay, let's give that a try then. Let's do machine spawn bootstrap. Bob's coming back into play. So we're now bootstrapping this into a different directory. So And then seeing if machine control, 
<laughs> can't get rid of Bob. We, we are going to get rid of Bob again. We'll, we'll throw it away straight away. But what we should find is if we can cache these bootstrap directories, once I've bootstrapped like Jammy, I don't need to bootstrap it. In the future, I can put some checks to say, ah, we have a distro here. There we go. So importing, what does it say? Importing var cache bootstrap Bob, saving as Bob. Okay. Let's see then. So if we now do machine control list. <laughs> Let's try it with sudo. What? What? Well, there's Bob. Bob is there. Bobby's there. Um, so this doesn't machine control. Why? I I I, I am not making it up right. List was definitely one of the commands. Yeah, it was. Oh, running, running VMs and containers. Oh, that's I'm actually doing it wrong. Okay show name show properties of one or more containers let's try some of these things left so let's try machine apple show bread doesn't know about bread but does it know about bob no do i have to give it the full path that seems a bit not very far lib Machines, Bob. No. Okay. Is this only for running things, though? Or when it says image, are those things that uh, only apply to VMs, not containers? Well, it doesn't seem to distinguish. So, <laughs> Kiwi Jim. So back in the day, there was a famous uh, proof of concept called Robin Hood. Yeah, two programs that ran. Yeah, watch each other and respawn. This is yes, this is true. I'm, I'm familiar with this history lesson. <laughs> Bob and Fred. <laughs> yeah Bob's invisible so it's curious isn't it the machine the machine control command show available so let's try list images let's try list images aha better so actually, maybe I don't need to do anything to enrol things, but we have found a potential way to pre-cache the bootstrapped environments so that we don't need to do it again. For example, if I do um, sudo machine spawn, ah. And we say bootstrap uh, Bob, Fred, and John. Oh, it is bootstrapping in the same directory again. Oh, because I bootstrap it into the name of the the name, not the distro. Okay, okay, that's just a, a logic change we can make. Let's go and do that now. Let's go and do that now. So it's not. So the bootstrap directory, I think we want it to derive in the function itself. R is going to be something like Slash um, 
this stray release like that uh, and then we say you know if it doesn't exist then create it else uh, warning it already exists so that's fine so let's try that again so let's come over here let's do a quick um, fiddle we'll move um, bar cash bootstrap what did we just do John uh, move that to um, jammy because that's what the code name for the distro is and now if we do another one with Betty um, so it says jammy already exists and it then it used that and called it Betty so if we go and look at the images now there's Betty and we should be able to uh, machine spawn run Betty there we go can I also do machine control machine control um, login Betty Betty not known hmm um, thought login was one it is get a login prompt oh in a container that shell let's do shell invoke a shell 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 betty ah well <laughs> this is getting a little frustrating so uh, why doesn't that work I wonder I thought that should should function enable automatic container start boot we don't want that power it off reboot it terminate it that copy files from the host to a container okay Find mount a path from the host into a container. Hmm. <laughs> You're suggesting names there, Yannick. So that's curious. So it says here that failed to get shell. No machine, Betty known. Well, that's a lie. Because you know that Betty's a machine. <laughs> because this thing tells us so. Maybe shell requires a user. I, 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 we can try that. Um, so root should be the only user that we have. But no, it's telling us that it doesn't know the machine Betty. Hmm. Show properties of an image. Okay. Show image Betty. See, it knows it knows about Betty. <laughs> ah, this the this machine control seems a little bit. Either I don't understand it, or something's not right. So we know remove works because we can, you know, run everyone's favourite command, and we can remove Bob. Bob's gone now, right? So if we look at the images no bob which is good remove test this is all fine so ah. thank you for the follow sgt pepper 9900 thank you very much for the follow uh that's it we've just hit our uh, our uh, follow goal that we've been running for a few weeks now so thank you very much for that for tipping us over the uh, over the edge uh, Dr. EJ says, reading the man page, it says you have to use the start command. What, to know that that contain To know that that container's a thing. Okay, so let's do start betting. Okay, so now let's do shell betting. Ha ha, 
So, nice one. Well spotted, Dr. EJ. If I'm spelling that correctly, or EJ. Um, so I have to have the container running. That's not what I want really, but okay. Um, so, I would like to be using that pull feature as well, but that didn't work. Hello, uh, Bonk Boy. Uh, welcome, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. So, failed to fetch temporary. Oh, okay, so now we've got the issue where, so this is why I've been doing things my own way is because um, the resolve.com in this has been taken from the host. Um, which of course won't work in the context of this container, which is why, so let's stop that, otherwise I'm gonna, so let's stop Betty. Okay, hmm. But I can, uh, there is the facility to wrap all of these commands. So we are doing that. And the other thing we can do is, I wonder if it's a one-time thing. It's always a DNS issue. It always, always is. Uh, are you doing Elon Musk stuff? No, not at all. Uh, tinkering. All, all, all Linux fun and games here. Uh, working on just, just experimenting with some container technologies to figure out, like uh, how I could potentially build a project, or if indeed I want want to create the project that I'm tinkering with. Um, Hmm. So I think there's some homework emerging here. I think um, I need to go and find out why the machine control pull mechanisms always fail to verify the certificates and why when you tell it not to verify the certificates, it still can't do what it needs to do with naming the containers. Because that would be quite nice from the point of view of having a mechanism. <laughs> Ivers underscore oh. Myers is raiding with a party of 48. Well, hello raiders. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you very much, Ivers. That's very kind of you. I saw you streaming earlier, actually. Um, I've seen your stream a couple of times. How did it go? What were you, um, what were you working on today? Um, we've just pasted here what we've been looking at. Um, we're looking at some system system D containers to potentially create a, pro a project uh, to build on my local build environment. Thank you for the follow up in. remote. Hey, welcome remote. Thank you for the follow uh, and build on them. So uh, we were, we were just tinkering. So, uh, Okay, uh, so you've just submitted a small fix to a personal project uh, and then co-working freelance. Cool, very good. Well, thank you very much for the raid. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I've enjoyed your streams on more than <laughs> on several occasions. Um... Thank you for the follow Simp <laughs> Crusader. Oh, what, uh, what do you mean it's uh, what you've been looking for? What? Uh, what some Linuxy stuff? Is that what you mean? There's a few of us doing Linux Thank stuff. Thank you for the follow, Jancha. Uh, who's this guy here? So we had Linux, Mac OS, and Windows discussion. <laughs> so we just had to Thank move. Thank you for okay. the follow, Paxos. Uh, yeah. Well, um, it's almost exclusively Linux-related stuff uh, here on this channel. Um, the only thank time it deviates. Follow, Myers. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, the only time it deviates into Mac OS and Windows is one of the projects that I work on here with the community of developers that, that hang out in this channel is a project called QuickMU, which is a way to stand up and run uh, virtual machines on Linux really quickly. So in two with two commands, you can not just 
create a machine but it will download the operating system images for Windows 10 or 11 or Mac OS, insert name of the release you want and automatically configure that VM so you can quick get Mac OS Monterey and then quick MU um, run Mac OS Monterey and it figures it all out for you. So um, you're getting annoying. Um, there we go. Thank you for the so, follow, Taylor Dev. Hello, Taylor. So, uh, so yeah, we have a, a project um, that we sometimes ha have to tinker around with the internals of Windows and Mac OS in order to optimize those um, those virtual machines that we're running. Today, it's kind of a spin-off. We've been looking at. Um, so let me just bring up my. It's, it's real prototype hacky stuff, but we've been experimenting with bootstrapping an Ubuntu container and then using systemd containers to, to run that container. Something that I've been doing for many years to build um, images of uh, Raspberry Pi operating systems, for example, but I can build those ARM images on x86 hardware, so much faster than building on ARM for, you know, um, so we've taken that and we're trying to adapt it to see if we can integrate it with Systemd's uh, facilities for managing containers and virtual machines. Because Danny, who's been in the chat here this morning, adapted some scripts that I made for creating portable builds of OBS Studio for Ubuntu to run as GitHub workflows using this technique and I'm seeing if we can flesh it out into a more generic tool for creating build environments either locally or in CI CD as a another option if you don't want to go to the lengths of standing up NextD or Docker or you know something like that in a in a CI CD VM so that's what we've been fiddling with with some success and some we bumped into some well I, I don't know whether to call it bugs I mean some of the machine control stuff just doesn't work as advertised it seems so I'm just deciding whether I work around some of machine controls um, issues or uh, or I'm not quite sure what, which way to go at the moment, but I think we're going to have to sort of wrap it and put our own stuff around it. Okay, so uh, Simp Crusader. If you love this stuff, then you're in the right place. We, we love a bit of Linux around here. Um, this is my personal stream where I tinker on a whole bunch of projects. I'm a, uh, a distro maintainer for one of the Ubuntu flavors. Um, I work on graphical apps. I tinker around with OBS Studio. So we do all manner of Linuxy stuff here. VMs, containers, a um, little bit of everything. Uh, we're going to be doing some game development, or I'm going to be doing some game development not far from now, all Linux based. Um, but if you love containers, then for my day job, I work for Slim AI. And we've got a channel here, um, Slim DevOps. So let me just do this. Uh, because we're streaming there tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, uh, Thursdays is our usual uh, streaming day. So Slim DevOps is where I stream for work and that is all container related, uh, container and Kubernetes related stuff. <clears throat> so there we go. So, but I, I was, I was just getting to the point where I'm thinking I've learned some things and I'm not sure I like everything I've learned this morning. Uh, and I'm just thinking about like, uh, where I'm going to take this project next and how to, to do things. And I think, I think what I'm going to do is stay the course with what I'd originally created using bootstrapping to create these containers and then um, we'll see if we can identify why machine control doesn't do the things it says it should do for us. Um, 
But I think the, the difficult problem to resolve is making sure that we can configure the containers the way we want to with some uh, bind mounting overrides and things like that. <laughs> yes, there is. There is a Commodore 64 just here. I say a Commodore 64, it's actually a My 64. And underneath it is a My Vic 20. So yeah, um, and I've got some actual Commodore 64s up on the shelf there. Um, uh, a genuine one, well, genuine silicon, which I've rebuilt on a new modern mainboard. And then another one I'm working on, which is a complete FPGA implementation of the Commodore 64. And both those projects are on hiatus. I'm waiting on a Kickstarter to conclude for some parts, but when those parts arrive, I will be finishing both those uh, on stream at some point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, I have one example of almost. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. So I've just got the uh, C64s. These, my 64s down here, they're actually... Um, reproduction cases of like the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64, but you can fit a mini ITX motherboard inside them. So they're actually PCs, um, but with a proper C64 keyboard and all the rest of it. They're pretty great. <laughs> I think the website is myretrocomputer.com. Let me just take a quick look. I think that's the, they make them just down the road from where I live. Yeah, this is the right place. Let, let me put a link in chat. There you go. That is uh, where you can get these things. A lot of fun. The guy that runs this is, is lovely as well. Um, so you can even get a kit to adapt it to stick a Raspberry Pi inside it. But I much prefer the idea of going gung-ho and sticking <laughs> great big PCs inside them. So yeah, I do a bit of retro stuff. Um, looking at rebooting another channel with a friend of mine here. All this talk of the C64 is making me miss 8-bit verses. Yeah, so 8-bit verses. I did renew the domain the other day. <laughs> and one of the reasons I created the OBS Studio portable builds was so I could bring back to life the 8-bit verses set. I'm not going to reuse it as it is because I've learned loads about OBS since I made that set. But um, looking at making a new 8-bit versus set so I'm obviously doing that for a reason <laughs> uh, it's a slow burn but we're we're working on it <laughs> we've got got some real technical hurdles to clear with that because Popey as always has got some bonkers ideas which are really good ideas but nevertheless it presents um, tough technical challenges that I need to solve so yeah <laughs> sorry, sorry, Kiwi Jim. Uh, if you if you're looking for other ways to burn money, then stop by again. I'm I, I can tell you all manner of things, uh, interesting little uh, gizmos and gadgets. Right, okay. I think I think I'm at the point where I've worked out enough of of this. Um. So. I think we're we're gonna we're gonna come back and have a go at this again uh, at some point in the future because um, I can see that this could be interesting based on the lit. Although it didn't work as I hoped today, I think um, this has got this has got mileage. This idea, so I think I'm going to um, to have a go at this try and like complete it um so i'll be looking forward to code contributions <laughs> i'll stick it up on github so what's today today's wednesday so i think on friday i might have another go at this and uh, and we'll see if we can flesh it out a bit more but for now i would like to say Thank you all for coming. We're going to head over to Plain Text Nerds, who's up and running at the moment. So we're going to drop by there and say hello. And uh, hopefully I will see all of you on Friday, if not sooner. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Um, 
and share your good good ideas. <laughs> nice one, Paul. Let's go raiding. Let's go and see uh, plain text nerds. Bye for now. <laughs>